Ringo Starr is one of the last remaining members from the iconic rock group The Beatles. He made an obvious impact on the music scene throughout his life, but his sense of spirituality is also no secret. Many people often contemplate the question, what is God? It's looked at as one of the most complicated questions one could answer in life, although Ringo is able to explain it in the most simple and profound way possible. Although that's just my opinion. Hear it in Ringo's words and decide if his definition is true to you. I'm going to ask you a very simple question, Ringo. What is God? Uh, God to me, my God in my life, God is love. Pure love. Love is an incredible power. Um, you know, if you give out love, the reaction to it is so great, even to like crazy violent people. If you give out love, they stop for a minute because everybody notices love when it's coming your way you know and you feel incredible when you give love back i feel that uh, you know as you go through life you uh, you know you make certain moves and it's it's very hard these moves and you don't feel good about it but if you're doing something with love all of this behind you all over the world will support you so that's how it is that's how the world works it's all the one God. The books I've read, it all says good and love. <laughs> Vietnamese uh, monk, whose name I can never pronounce, but he's saying that, you know, just in your daily life to be doing things. And he says, you know, like when you get to the traffic, like it's no good getting crazy. Just love the red light. And then when it changes, drive on. And he says, and when you're angry, it's no good being angry at yourself because then you're twice as angry. <laughs> I, you know, I like to keep that in my life also. It's convoluted because there are a lot of religions that believe that their God is greater, or a lot of people... Who, yes, but that's people. people. This is not God. This is the, you know, what the religion says. And the people who, you know, are in that religion. You know, I am not religious i'm trying my best on a daily basis to have a spiritual life but i think you know everybody wants their religion to be you know universe wide and they're not like all the the natives of long ago most of them we've wiped out in the name of religion uh you know let live you know the american indians couldn't understand the concept of buying land <laughs> What do you mean you want the land? It's for all of us, you know? And the world is for all of us. We are one. Now, I feel I had spiritual moments as a young kid. And, you know, I feel I had spiritual moments as a teenager, just second. There's things I remember of this emotion. And, you know, as you know, we went to India and Maharishi and we tried that and we looked at that. Uh, you know, and since then, you know, we're, we're just like looking and searching and, and hoping and crying and laughing. Uh, you know, I heard one guy say, uh, called Young, he was so great. He was asked, uh, do you still believe in God? And he said, no. He says, I know. I don't need to believe. I know. He's the only one I ever knew who said, I know. <laughs> How great is that? You know, people are frightened of the word God. You know what I mean? They don't, oh God, I mean, well, you can't like just say God. Well, you can. You know, someone asked me once, well, what is your concept? And I went to go off into these 60s madness of energy and things like that. And I thought, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. God is love. Keep it simple. What do you think happens when you die? Personally, I believe I go somewhere. So you believe that your uh, spirit I, is separate from your body? I do. Do you believe And the spirit does not cause the madness, you know, and it's not the power-hungry situation that a lot of humans grow into. That's the human condition. God is love. Love is love. You know, and the more we put love in our life, that's all I ever want to say. There's more love on the planet. Although many people left the peace and love message in the 60s, Ringo held on to it strong. 
It's become his motto in life, and he spreads the message of peace and love any chance he gets. Peace and love. Some people yeah, from yeah. who were like who first ran into the peace and love message in the 1960s gave up on it. How did you hold on to the peace and the love, Ringo? It just became natural for for greeting peace and love, brother. You know, it's, uh, it it was embedded in the 60s. Of course, I didn't invent it, and. Um, and I love the 60s. I mean, what a change went on in everybody's life, uh, thanks to Timothy Leary, of course. But um, I, I don't know. It just then I was on tour. You know, I hadn't been out live for years. And it just became like, hey, peace and love, everybody. And it just sort of went from there. Then we have my birthday, uh, special, you know, 7th of July. And we have a peace and love moment at noon. And so I just use it any way I can because I truly believe in peace and love. In 1968, the Beatles traveled to India to take part in a transcendental meditation course with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. A quote from Wingo that sticks out to me is, At the end of the day, I can end up just totally wacky because I've made mountains out of molehills. With meditation, I can keep them as molehills. Over 40 years ago, uh, we ended up in Rishikesh. And that's where we met. Well, it wasn't where we met. It's where we hung out with Maharishi. We'd met him a few months before in Wales. And since then, sometimes uh, a lot and sometimes a little, I have meditated. And, uh, you know, it's a, a gift he gave me. Um, was my mantra that something I could use and something no one could take away. So it's one of the few things I was ever given that uh, means that much to me. Having someone as accomplished as Ringo, it's strange to think of who his role models would be. Although it seems clear to me that he looks up to Maharishi. It's no surprise that he's a supporter of the David Lynch Foundation and its efforts to fund the teaching of meditation in schools. When I first met him, I was in a room because it was in a a university, so we're like in dorm, you know, in a dormitory <laughs> we're all living. And uh, it was, it's one of those mind altering moments of your life because the man was so full of joy, you know, and happiness and it just blew me away. You know, um, on my best day, I never felt like he looked. Uh, it was so far out, he was so, I was just thought, I want some of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was a, the best thing that could happen. Where were you before that? What were you? Well, I never meditated in my life. But even just your head, your no, my head was a bit in those last sort of sixty-six, no, sixty-seven. Uh, mainly sixty-seven was a bit confused. <laughs> uh, a lot of things were going on, and anyway, he was one of the people who helped me out of that. Just. Not that he said, here, I'm helping you out. He was helping everybody, but he seriously helped me. Well, the sense of David in his work is brilliant. I mean, he's doing a lot more than I am, and you, and, you know, the foundation. I mean, that, that's what it's working for. Uh, you know, I mean, the big one for me, of course, is the bringing uh, meditation into schools. And, you know, and he was telling me that, you know, they know from the heads of schools that the violence has gone down. How far out is that? You know? Particularly when kids are taking guns into school. I know. Well, you know, it's in like hard schools. It mainly goes in. That is incredible. You have to support him for that. <laughs> 